Okay, what are you so what are you doing? You're picking a leaf. Okay, so yeah, what we'll do with this leaf is we'll put it in here uh, and then we will send it to seed weight savers who are going to submit it to a lab in England to okay. get a genetic foot uh, fingerprint of it. Uh, okay. So we'll find out what it's related to. I'm assuming there's a database that when you get the genetic uh, fingerprint of this back, you can kind of factor that into the system there and we'll see what kind of relatives it has in terms of the variety of fruit and, um, and whether it has whether we have a name for it to begin with but also whether we ha it, it has uh, fellow clones elsewhere in, in Britain and Ireland. And we have always assumed as a family that this is a oh and look we've plucked an apple tree <laughs> yes, from a different have. tree but this is a pear tree and it's the cooking cadillac pear tree okay. that what is what we've always assumed it was called and is the cooking cadillac the cooking cadillac uh, we always remember it as the cadillac you right. think of the yeah, old yeah. american car the cadillac but we it's called the cadillac yes okay and so that's what we're assuming it is but you also you teach at I teach at NCAD on a project, which is the National College of Art and Design, a project called NCAD Field. So what the field is, it's a kind of well, a derelict brownfield site beside the college yeah. that has a kind of layered history. Uh, um, so much so that we've stopped calling it a derelict site. We're now calling it a novel ecology. Oh, wonderful. Oh, I love that it's new got term. This, it's got this really kind of rich... We are now uh, climbing a uh, fence. Okay. Is okay. he okay? Good. Uh, not, no higher, Austin. He's going to go over. You could open the gate. There's no livestock in there. And then he can walk up in there. There, just leave the gate open and he can go play up there. Yes, yeah, so NCD Field, we're calling it a novel ecology because of the really astonishing range of kind of fauna that's there. And flora, I should say. Well, flora first, you know. And then the fauna uh, follows. The fauna follows. Yes. So it, it being in the Liberties area of Dublin, which is like, you know, really on green yes you know, an on green area very urban just p profoundly urban with a very low uh, public access to green space yes uh, that's, a, that's a real major issue in, in the area yeah um, but we have this little kind of enclave um, so in terms of flora it's extremely interesting because it was used as a kind of community garden yeah but that was kind of left alone and then what you have is these kind of plants a process of fertilization you have all these yeah. kind of beetroots and parsnips and kales that are that are self-pollinating yeah. and self-seeding but you have that kind of mixed with with other kind of native species that have yeah. found their way and then of course also kind of invasive species creating this kind of really really curious habitat yes and when i talk about interesting uh, fauna that's there well yeah. obviously we have an, a, a resident urban fox yes not such a big deal but but also we have a peregrine falcon that lives in the in the, oh, wow, in the church adjacent so to us. all the mice and voles it would be feeding rats. off oh uh, rats okay yes rats. hello <laughs> rats 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 oh, and pigeons look that's a, a ripe nice plum. plum did you take a bite of it yeah. it's good that is yeah. ripe awesome. these you are plums have a ripe. it's a plum look 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 at your papa he ate it these are good really good awesome. you want a plum you like he oh, does not again. look convinced about oh. eating a plum. He'll come back to us. He'll come back. But anyway, anyway. That's, that's NCD. But adjacent to the college, 400 meters away, we have, and it's got a plaque. It's either Dublin or Ireland's oldest fruit tree. But, but and but this is also. <laughs> <laughs> this tree is kind of very tall and very old, mm. and compared to your Dublin pear tree, the trunk is a lot thicker. Yes, yeah. Um, uh, uh, height is questionable as to whether they're comparable or not. Well, I'd say there's very little in it height-wise. But, um, but age, you can always see age within a trunk mm. definitely means this might be an older tree than yours. Very, very curious. Because yours, uh, you, I, I think you came, when you first came here and you were talking about your pear tree, I said, well, can I show you my pear tree? That's it. And you were like, oh, Ah, oh, okay, maybe ours isn't the oldest and biggest. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's and so it. I said, put your arms around this tree. And you were yeah. like, uh, no, this one's bigger That's than it. the Dublin one. And at the, by the same token, I'm, I'm 
by no means competitive with such no, things. No, 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 absolutely. You know, you know, I'm just fascinated. Yes. So what we'll do is we'll submit this pear tree. It's great we have a name for it yes. to get its, gene its genetic fingerprint. Yeah. We'll also submit the one that's near the college, which is actually in the digital hub now. Oh, um, excellent. Yeah, in the digital hub. And what we have a date on that. We have a date. It was definitely there. It was mentioned in 1872 as quite a mature tree. Excellent. Because uh, it's on the site of an old uh, whiskey factory. Um, I, that kind of brought us back to thinking maybe it's from 1850, but the latest date we have in it is 1805. But that, 1805. That very old. Very good. That is old. Well, we have a map in the house when this farm was, it, my family moved here as renters in 1800. Mm. And then in 1850, we um, uh, bought it outright, finally right. bought it. Yeah. Um, but on the realtor's map for when they put it on the market, you can see this tree in the garden. Right. So that's 1850. So we know it's mature enough to be on, it's big enough to yeah. be noted on a map yeah. in 1850. Yeah, so it go. could be the same sort of age as your one that's in it. Dublin. That's so it. it could be 1800. So maybe there was a, a bunch of these Cadillac pears that came to Ireland as a shipment and were planted in various locations, well, yours if, being one. If they're, if they're, these are cooking pears, you said. Yes. The, the ones in Dublin have become quite large and yellow. Um, they're good to eat, but the skin is quite astringent. Yeah. But the flesh is delicious. Okay, no, this is a cooking pear. Yeah, You yeah. definitely have to cook it. Okay. So, okay, so they're, they're a different... They're not going to be... No, they're, they're not, not going to be related then. Not, oh, no. Maybe they might be cousins. I was hopeful. I yeah. was hopeful. Uh, that would be... We, we, we got to we gotta project into what would be... What, what could be really astonishing. But certainly we, 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 we get the genetic uh, fingerprints of both pairs and then there's also an old vestige of an orchard down in Kilmainham nearby yeah. where we are. Yeah, um, this is old Kilmainham jail. It's, it's old Kilmainham, the Royal Hospital. The Royal Hospital, But it's now Apologize, actually yeah. the park that's now the Garda station. Gotcha. And somehow these pear trees have also kind of survived. Survived as a vestige, in just up the urban the wall. areas. Wow. Yeah. So our, our, what we need to do is, well, we get them genetically fingerprinted, and we need to we need to get grafting. Yes. To get the kind of grafting. These are well, no, and you'll be able to graft from this. I have some pear babies over there Wonderful. that a friend of mine grafted. Wonderful. Um, so hopefully uh, we can you can come with students potentially yes. and pick yeah. grafts to do next spring or something. That would be wonderful. Wouldn't that be good? That would be wonderful because I'm quite keen to have the NCD field come down here to see uh, regenerative farming in action and the multi-species sword. Well, and I, you, I could, should walk you around some of my lawn, which is hardly any grass, and it's all things like daisies and, and um, self-heal and clovers and all kinds of other things, as well as a few grasses, so that they can see what a lawn can look like that's, that's a multi-species lawn that's rather it. than just a golf course lawn. Beyond rye. Beyond, beyond rye, rye exactly. Yeah, way beyond. Exactly. But this would be astonishing because uh, just the, the day we had here when we visited with Deirdre uh, O'Mahony. The Butler Gallery uh, event. The, but yeah. the Butler Gallery, yeah. yeah I, I haven't been able to look at the green fields of Ireland quite the same, you know. Uh, when you understand what a multi-species sward, a, a uh, complex multi-species sward is meant to look like versus what the government is calling like ryegrass and clover or three different species or yeah. six different species where a multi-species sward should be a diversity of herbs, legumes and grasses mm -hmm. of many varieties of everything. And activating different depths and pulling different things out of the ground. And, yes. And, and I kind of, like I was just really struck by the resilience in terms of drought. You know, if you've yes. got these things that have roots that go down two Deep. meters, I mean, yeah. that's phenomenal yeah. just in terms of resilience, which is... Okay, Something we're so gonna need. when are we going to hear the results about the pair? I'm not sure. I am a kind of middleman, so I send this to Seed Savers. Yes. Seed Savers send it to the lab in in Britain. Okay. Along with a whole other kind of host of mostly apple trees, because that's okay. Seed Savers' fo primary focus. And when we get the results back, you'll certainly be one of the first to know. Great yeah. news. Well, thank you so very much. Oh, we never said your name. My name is Gareth Kennedy. Okay. Uh, so I'm an artist, uh, I, I teach, but I also teach sculpture and in NCD field. The okay. whole idea of NCD field is to connect the art and design curriculum to the natural world, to seasonal cycles, uh, and to kind of reckon with the great 
challenges of this century. You know, yes. we, we, one of our mottos is climate crisis is as much a kind of cultural crisis in terms of it the is. imagination yes. uh, as it is. Oh, that's fantastic. Crisis of all other things. Okay, well, thank you. And I look forward to hearing the results. Thank you, Suzanne.